I remember the day they destroyed our synagogue. The stormtroopers wouldn't let the fire engines through. My mother and my sister were hysterical. Shops were attacked and Jews were made to wear the Star of David on their clothes. Everyone had to carry identity cards. At the age of nine, I cried. I thought it was all so sad. One day when I was walking to school, a soldier came over to me and cut my hair short with his bayonet and laughed. I was shaking. I felt I had lost part of my body and I stopped going to school after that. Then another soldier took away my sister and we never saw her again. My father managed to get a visa to go to Argentina, but he decided against it. This probably cost him his life, and my mother's as well. They put up signs saying, Jews not wanted here. And many shops refused to serve us. We were forced to leave our home. They came very early in the morning and ordered us all out of the house. We couldn't bring anything with us. They took us by lorry to the ghetto and it was very crowded. Many people were sick or hungry or dying, and it became harder for families to survive. We all tried to help each other, but there was so very little to go round. One day, they cleared the street for deportation. A lot of us were taken away on lorries or railway trucks. Children were lined up and marched away. I was one of them. We didn't understand what was happening. My mother shouted something to me, but, but I couldn't hear what she said. Perhaps it was, I love you. Some of them queued for the train because they thought they might get work. When we were waiting on the platform, a woman tried to run away, but the stormtrooper shot her. Some people were screaming because they separated the men from the women and children. The soldiers had dogs and some of them were beating people on the back and the head with sticks. To them, we were just names of a list. Then they herded us onto the train. The smell of urine made you want to vomit. We were all crushed together like sardines. The journey was about 12 hours, but there was no food or drink. There were slits in the boards of the wagons and we could see the sun through them. Most people didn't speak at all. Some of them prayed, others sobbed. I never saw my father after that. The train ran right into the camp. They told us to get off and leave our luggage. We were told to march forwards in a large column. It was a barracks with barbed wire, everywhere barbed wire. 
It was enormous. We made a strip and then immersed ourselves in disinfectant. Those who didn't do it properly had their heads pushed down with rifle butts. We were moved to the showers. Our dignity, like our identity, was lost. The food was terrible. Two ounces of bread a day and on Sunday a special treat of tea without milk. The bread was used for bartering, but as we came closer to starvation, it was stolen from the weakest. Some even fought over a dead woman's toothbrush. My friend asked some women, where are my parents? They all screamed with laughter. <laughs> They're in the chimney by now. We thought they were mad. They thought we were mad. The stench of the latrines was unimaginable. There were 20 in one row and 20 in another, all under one roof. People sat very close to each other on the marble slabs and the SS poked our behinds with long poles as we sat there. Under all these round holes was a drain with thousands of lice and dozens of rats running around among the urine and excrement. Typhoid was widespread. We slept in wooden bunks and each building housed hundreds of prisoners sleeping five to a bunk. The odour of sweat was overpowering. They observed every minute of our lives through the watchtowers. We walked through the arch bearing the slogan, Arbat macht frei, work makes you free. It was ironic, but work did in a very real sense preserve life. Inability to work was a death sentence. My uncle was so weak he couldn't work. They gassed him. Those who'd been starving for weeks on end and were inadequately clothed literally froze to death where they'd been forced to stand all night. Some were packed into tiny cellars where standing was the only option. After a few days, they were, most of them were dead. I remember pushing a wheelbarrow full of coal up to the crematorium. I, I saw the bodies lying there waiting to be burned in the oven. On the third journey, I collapsed from exhaustion and started crying. You could be shot for this. Prisons were made to pack their suitcases. They were sent to, up to the gas chambers, believing they were going to have a shower. The gas nozzles uh, had been covered with colanders to create the illusion. Those near there died almost immediately, but those further away uh, must have survived up to five minutes. I remember seeing the empty gas canisters. It was hell. Shit. My father had four sisters. They all died in the Auschwitz gas chambers. My grandmother cheated the Nazis by dying from a heart attack on arrival at the camp. So many were shot. Others worked till they dropped. In the end, they caught the camp commandant, Rudolf Hurst, and brought him back to Auschwitz, the scene of his unspeakable crimes. He presided over the deaths of more than a million. 
appropriately, they hanged him here. There were stories of cannibalism, that some were so hungry they, they cut the livers from corpses and ate them. That is why there are nights, even today, when I cannot sleep. Though I'm now safe from that life behind the wire. How can people say that it isn't true? That six million didn't die is just beyond belief. I saw people killed every day. That was my childhood. I will never get rid of it. I will die with it. If you were to make a horror film, nothing that you could possibly imagine would begin to compare with what we experienced here. Nothing.